solve the three-dimensional space truss. At A, B, and C, you have short links that go into some sort of ball and socket joint. So we can say that on our free body diagram, I will have two forces at A in the Y and X directions. I'll have two forces at C in the Y and Z directions. And I'll have two forces at B in the X and Y directions. I also have my 1700 Newton load acting down at E. Notice that there's no reason that you have to include all of the members in your free body diagram. If it just messes it up, leave them out. I'm going to start by solving equilibrium equations for the three-dimensional free body diagram. I'm going to actually start by taking the sum of the moments that act around the z-axis. Z now the reason to start there is because I'm actually going to be able to solve for something. So sometimes you go backwards. In fact, the only thing that would spin this truss about the z-axis is by. bx, cy and cx, ay and ax, all of them intersect with the z-axis. So they do not cr create a moment at the z-axis. by acts at a distance of 0.6 which is somewhat immaterial. At this point, I can say by has to be equal to zero. Now, take the sum of the moments about the y-axis. Again, the only reason to do it backwards is for convenience. Now, ax at this point will spin the y-axis because it acts perpendicular to the y-axis at a distance of 1.7 meters. The other thing that would spin your hand, if you put your thumb along the y-axis, would be the 1700 newton load. And that distance for the 1700 newton load would be 0.6. They're going to spin the y-axis in opposite directions. So one has to be equal to the other, and ax has to be equal to 600 newtons. Now I'm going to look at the sum of the moments in the x-direction. When I look at what spins the x-axis, again, bx and ax are in the direction of the axis, they're not going to spin the axis. by and cy intersect the axis, that's not going to spin the axis. ay will, at a distance of 1.7 again, and my 1700 will, but now my distance is 1.125. They are again in opposite directions, so I know that ay has to be 1.125 newtons. Now I can look at my sum of the forces. If I sum the forces in the z direction, I get cz has to be equal to minus 1700, because it's the only two forces you have in the z direction. If you sum the forces in the y direction, you know that ay plus by plus cy has to be equal to zero. by already equals zero. So ay has to be equal to minus cy, or the other way around. cy is minus 1125 newtons. And the sum of the forces in x says bx equals ax, given how I drew them on the free body diagram, and ax is 600, so bx is 600 newtons. Now, having solved for the external reactions, the next thing I want to consider is whether there are zero force members. If I can, by inspection, look at some of these joints and figure out something that might be zero, that's going to make my job easier as I solve for the rest of my members. So for example, start at joint B. If you look at what's happening at B, you're going to have the 600 Newton reaction load. BY is zero, so I don't have that. And then I will have BE and BD and BC. All of those so far are in the plane. AB is the only one in the, that's not in the plane. AB is in the XZ plane. All the others are in the XY plane. Anytime you have something where all of your members are in one plane except for one force, you know A, B has to be equal to zero. So that's good, we found one. Now look at another joint. Look at D. If I look at D, I will have BD, DE, and CD. Again, all of those are in the, the XY plane. AB is the only one that's not in the x, y plane. So you can say AD is in the y, z plane, all others in the x, y plane. That gives you AD equals zero. At this point we're just motoring along. 
If we go into the joint at C, you can say I'll have my reaction, 1125 newtons. I'll have BC. I'll have my other reaction, 1700 newtons. I'm going to have CD. And now I've got AC coming up. BC is in the XY plane. Everything else are in the XY plane, the YZ plane. So you know that BC has to be equal to zero. That's about it for your zero force members on this one. At this point, we want to actually start solving things. So if I start here with my joint at C that I've already got written down, I can say the sum of the forces in Z, what's going up and down, AC plus 1700 has to be equal to zero. So AC is minus 1700 newtons. And the sum of the forces in Y gives me 1125 plus CD equals zero. So CD is minus 1125 newtons. We've got five of the nine members. Now let's look back at joint B. And actually what I want to do is I want to draw only the looking down on the XY plane. I have my 600 newton load, BE and BD. AB and BC are both equal to zero, so that's, those are the only loads that act on joint B. That angle is given by the distances in your problem. So this is going to be the same slope as 1.125 over 0.6, with a rise of 0.6 over 1.125. And if you actually plug that into a calculator, you get that the hypotenuse here has to be 1.275. So I can sum the forces vertically or rather in the x direction, and I get BD times 0.6 over 1.275 has to be equal to 600, and BD times 1.125 using similar triangles plus BE has to be equal to zero. So now I can solve. BD is 1275 newtons, and BE is minus 1125 newtons. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, loads we've taken care of. The only ones we've got left are AE and DE. At this point you want to actually consider joint E. And what I want to do is I want to look at E in the plane because it's easier to see what's going on at that point. Specifically, I want to consider AE and its projection into the XY plane. So here's my projection T. I know that whatever that projection is, has to be in equilibrium with DE and BE. And this angle will be theta, where theta, uh, phi rather, where phi is going to be given with the same triangle we had before, over the rise of 0.6 and a run of 1.125, 1.275. And the other angle for the other projection gives me 1.275, with a rise of 1.7 in the z direction. And if you plug that into your calculator, you get 2.125 for that length, the length from A to E. If you write your equilibrium equations from this E in the plane, I get BE is equal to minus T times 1.125 over 1.275, which lets me solve given that I already know what BE is from up here, to find T is 1275. This is the projection of AE in the plane. I can go back with my triangles here and say AE has to be T over cosine theta. The cosine theta I can get from my triangle, from distances, and so AE has to be 2125 newtons. The sum of the forces in the other direction from the joint at E gives me DE is T times 0.6 over 1.275, which lets me solve to find DE is 600 newtons. And you've stepped your way through the whole space truss. That's all you've got.